So yeah, I'm going to focus the talk actually not on Astro, um, but just like a few things that I've learned when starting a hardware startup, and actually things that I've learned before starting a hardware startup. And I think that's like an important thing to understand that this process has been something that has sort of unfolded for me over the course of many years. Um, and so to start, just a background, Astro, we're a team of six. I founded the company in uh, April. Um, and I've worked in smart home industry for a really long time, and I've never had access to smart home products. So I worked at Crestron Electronics, which is the largest home automation company in the world. And I've never actually been able to like own or make use of a smart home product, even though I had access to $100,000 worth of equipment in my home. And so at Astro, we're actually focusing on this demographic, which I think probably represents a lot of us. Um, people are moving to cities in droves. 80% of the population in America lives in urban centers around the coast. And uh, the needs of people who live in urban centers are vastly different than those that live uh, in, in suburban homes. And so, um, so this, this industry has literally largely ignored this demographic. Um, and so renters who live in small spaces and move often Literally, there's, there's not a product for us. And so um, Astro is making products for this demographic. Um, I'm going to leave Astro here, and we're going to talk about sort of things that I've learned along the way. Um, so three things that I've learned when starting a hardware company. I think it'll be easier to use this clicker. Yes, cool. To start, hardware is not the hardest part of starting a hardware company. Uh, that sounds kind of contrarian, right? Um, the idea that building hardware is really hard and complicated, um, we've been sort of told that hardware is really hard, but I think that's sort of dishonest. Um, it's not that hardware is really hard, but starting a company does not make a company, excuse me, starting a hardware company is not just in building a hardware product, right? It's in building multiple pieces of this equation. And so it's not just one part of the equation. It, excuse me, hardware is just one part of that equation. This is what building a good company looks like. It is a feedback loop. You build brand, you build public relations strategies, you build user experience, industrial design, accounting. If I were to take away the hardware components of this, it would only be industrial design and hardware removed. This still reigns true whenever you build a company. You still need this nexus of skills and things. And so when you think about building a hardware company, I think most people are focused on building hardware. And maybe because we're hardware people, we gravitate towards doing the things we know. Um, but this is how you build a successful company in this space. And so that leads into the next lesson, which is that the next lesson, which is that your team must be diverse. And so I like to say that if you enter a complex market, you need to have a diverse set of skills to tackle that market. And in order for us to be successful, I borrowed sort of a page in the, uh, in the Valve handbook, right, which is that we hire T-shaped people, people who have wide skill, wide skill sets, right, but have depth, a great deal of depth in a particular skill set. Um, so for me, I've been a front-end developer for a really long time and a software architect, but I can do design. I mean, I designed these slides, it's really beautiful. Um, but I could do design and I understand design. I'm also an electrical engineer by degree. And so um, I have a, bro a broad set of skills and my entire team, everyone that hopefully when they're here, you'll meet, um, everyone has a really diverse set of skills. Right, and so do all the things. So you need to be really good at doing all of these things, marketing, design, user experience, software, and hardware. Again, if I was not a hardware company, there's still four things on here that are really important for me to hire and do. And so hardware is just, again, part of that equation. And so this is my team. I'm really proud of them. Um, when you look at our team, you see there's software, hardware, marketing, admin, creative, software. I am the admin person, right? My job is in making sure that my entire company is successful. Um, I hired people who are better at software, better electrical engineering, better embedded uh, design and software, um, and marketing and creative than I am. And I no longer do those things. I oversee them. Um, and that was like actually particularly challenging because um, I'll tell you why more later, but I, I, left every job I ever worked at feeling like I didn't have enough say. And now I'm finally like the boss. And I have very little say in everything we do. I'm just kind of a guiding light. Um, and that's kind of a cool experience. So, you know, for instance, Harlan here, who, who happens to be here, 
he's a software engineer, right? But he like started a company before called Reonomy that did commercial real estate analytics and like he understands the value of good design. Um, same with Aki. Aki is our hardware engineer, second from the left, and he's built a product, he's built a name for himself called the LED Artist. So this guy is like, if you look at his website, he's built like, the most gorgeous LED wearable products. And so he's like incredibly design oriented, but he's the best engineer I've ever worked with. Um, and so I think that reigns true for our entire team. And so I won't bore you with going through our bios, but um, as much as I'd like to. Um, so that's lesson number three, right? So patience is a virtue. Uh, I think that a lot of times hardware companies are encouraged to go to market as soon as possible. And I think that like lean, uh, the lean movement has taught us that go to market and validate your idea. I don't think that's true. And like I encourage people to challenge me on that. Um, and we haven't done that and there's a reason we haven't done that and there's a reason I'm not talking about my product with you guys. Is that patience is a virtue that you show things off when you're ready to deliver upon them and there's too many products out there in this market who say they're gonna do X, Y, Z and then when they deliver they only do X and like Y is an afterthought and Z is an afterthought. And so when we set out to build the product, we said this is a marathon, uh, this is a marathon not a sprint and we're building products looking at the long-term vision of the, the company and how this will affect our user experience. This will affect our distribution. Um, how the brand that we build will be able to get into the places we want in retail. And so I would encourage people like, if you don't want to raise venture capital, go and go to Kickstarter. But if you want to build a venture backed business and you want to build a brand and you really care about brand and, and delivering on time and uh, building the product that you promised you were going to build, then think about this as a marathon. And so this is a timeline, excuse me, I'm, let me just take a sip. So this is a timeline to starting Astro. So, excuse me, uh, so I actually had a slide in here before that I removed, but it was my bank account statement. And it was my bank account statement during this process, and it was really interesting to look at. I actually pulled data, right? And, I, and somewhere in August 2006, I had a little bit of money. I bootstrapped my first company. And then I was broke, and so I went to work for someone else. And like literally, I was in $50,000 in debt. Um, it was pretty scary. And um, I started at Crestron, which is the largest home automation company. And, uh, and you see like all of a sudden I start to get out of debt. And then right around when I started uh, Astro, I, I had $100,000 in the bank. And I was like, buy a house, you know, start a family maybe, I'm single, but start a family uh, or like start a company. And so I chose to start a company. And that was literally, this was a six year endeavor to like get out of debt, to save enough money to start my company. Um, so, in the first phase, I, I like to talk about my career in phases. And my first phase of my career was I started a hardware company. I made paintball electronics. If anyone plays paintball, I'd love to talk to you about this afterwards. It's kind of cool. Um, I had an exit opportunity. It was an aqua hire. I could have sold my company for $150,000, gone to move to Bentonville, Arkansas. I was 23 years old, had no debt at the time. I could have been, I don't know where I would be now if I did that. But I chose not to, and I chose to work at Crestron. And in that time, I learned how to manage people. I learned how to scale a company, how a vertically integrated company works. So one thing that's cool about Crestron, I think all of you would find really interesting, is that they do all of their own PCB manufacturing, all the design in-house, all their SMT stuff, all in-house, completely vertically integrated. All their plastics, metals, all the assembly, all happens in Northvale, New Jersey. It's really cool. And so like, I learned what like, is possible if you have a company that does a billion dollars in revenue and decides to vertically integrate. But then at some point, I said, well, shit, that's not for me. I should work at a startup. I should have more influence over the product that we build. I had very little influence, uh, or so I, uh, so I thought. So I worked at Lot 18. And I worked at Lot 18 because I wanted ownership in this whole process. I wanted equity, right? As startups, you get equity. Uh, and what I found was that when I joined that company at 120 people, I left it at 30 people. And so actually, ironically, I saw how not to scale a business. But I did meet one of our first engineers and the only other board member in our company. So the value of working at a company is that while someone's paying you, you're networking, you're saving money, and you're learning how to successfully build or not build a business. At the same time, I also worked at, I moved to Chartbeat, and that's where I hired yet another one of our engineers, uh, taught us. And I also have one of our, our marketing, uh, excuse me, our, um, our marketing advisor. And so it was really valuable to see how like different startups scaled. I joined Charpy to 30 and conversely left at 100 people. Um, so 
the next thing I did was said, okay, I really want ownership over everything I do. And this whole patience is a virtue thing, right? I said, I have some money. I can start my own company. I could bootstrap it, but I really want to build a venture back business. And so I set out to raise money. And I said, here, I had a slide in my pitch deck that said, I'm going to build this product. Here's the vision. Uh, if you give me money, I will hire these people. And like I had prospective hires, people I might hire. It was kind of funny to look back. I only hired two of them out of the six I had listed. But that enabled me to raise money and de-risk the people who joined me, which was kind of a cool thing to be able to do. So I, I hired this team and, uh, and we grew a, a product. And so, uh, whoa, sorry. Um, so the next phase was that I was able to take my existing network and poach people from the places that I really, these people that I thought were really valuable. And I knew what skills that we wanted and I knew who I wanted to hire and what types of personalities we wanted and I was able to like sort of leverage that experience to do this. And to talk, to bring it full circle, we went from idea to hiring to fully looks like works like prototypes in four months. So if I followed the mantra that like hardware is really the hardest part of starting a hardware company, then why did I spend eight years doing everything else? Right? I literally built, I, and I have it here, I'm not gonna show it to you, but uh, I built a fully what looks like works like prototype in four months. And that's pretty cool. And we're ready to go to manufacturing. And like after Chinese New Year, I'm going to China to do it. And so I think um, there's a few takeaways, which is hardware is not the only component of building a successful startup. Your team skills should be really diverse. Uh, people should be willing to challenge you and should be T-shaped. Uh, and then take your time. Patience is a virtue. And so if you learn three things, I think these are really valuable. And so anyone, I guess, questions? Is that the, the next? Uh, yeah. Okay, cool. Uh, great. Yeah. Thank, thank you very much. And uh, so you very kindly uh, uh, didn't use this to pitch, uh, which I really <laughs> appreciate it, and to instead share your, uh, you know, what, what you learned. Uh, but maybe you could tell us a little bit about uh, what, you, what you guys actually do, the vision, the product. Um, is it, are you cool if I don't share the product, but I can talk about the rest? You can talk about whatever you want. Okay. If, if yeah, you yeah. Want, yeah. Um, yeah, so I don't want to pitch anyone. I think like when we launch the product, I hope then the vision will speak for itself. But um, sort of go back to what we're doing is that like most of us here probably rent. And, and the idea that like home automation is the Jetsons era, we're like in this Jetsons era, uh, that hasn't resonated with me and that hasn't resonated with my team. What we really want is really easy devices that are portable that we can take with us when we move because I move every year. I moved 12 times in 10 years. And um, I think we really want to focus on building a product and a suite of products that help you go from unsophisticated smart home user to incredibly sophisticated smart home user. And we think that evolution will happen over the course of years and through multiple purchases. And so our first series of products is really targeted at giving people a really simple taste of what the smart home might look like. And um, you know, it's completely, it's easy to install. Anyone can do it in 30 seconds. Um, and I'm being really vague and I hate doing that. But uh, the, the what's that? <laughs> yeah, and we're not in stealth mode, by the way. We're, we're just, we think it's better to show it off when we're ready to sell it and we don't want to sell it yet. And so, you know, I think we're really focused on improving your quality of life through really simple, easy to use products. And our, we're trying to give people the opportunity to make their apartment feel more like a home. And that's sort of cliche to say, but I think it's kind of a cool, uh, cool concept. So, um, okay, cool. Uh, thanks. Any, any questions? In the back, um, how do we do Yeah, shout. Yeah. yeah, so he asked if I, if I had the idea from before, or if like I guess the team came up with it, or is that what you're... Like when you started your first job, you know what kind of startup you No, yeah, so he asked if I knew what kind of startup I was gonna have. No, um, so I'd always, always been obsessed, even though I've written software for 20 years, I've always been obsessed with the idea that there's, there's an opportunity to create physical devices. So, so a long time ago I wanted to start a sock subscription service. Crazy, right? Uh, and by the way, now a bunch of them have popped up. But I always wanted to like do things in the physical world. I like tangible goods. Um, 
And, and so I knew I was going to create something physical. When I started Astro, by the way, um, I started like, you know, making some AI solution for a smart home and I realized how impractical that really was. Um, and so I think even the product that we'll be shipping and, and we'll be selling in spring is, um, is very different than when we started a year ago. Um, not in concept, but probably in implementation. So, um, so it took time, yeah. Well, thank you very thank much. You.